I couldn't even lift the weights. When I was complaining about it to a friend, he told me about Angioprim. He said chelation helps remove toxins, heavy metals, and cholesterol in veins and arteries that may cause blockages. You know, after just one week of taking Angioprim, the pain was gone, and now I'm back in the gym full strength. Scientific research proves the active ingredient in Angioprim has superior oral chelation action that helps promote cardiovascular health. So to learn more, go to Angioprim.com. That's A. N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M dot com or talk to a trained consultant. Call Angioprim toll free at 877-882-7221. You'll feel better with more energy. Call 877-882-7221 or go to the website angioprim.com. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black, across the globe on the Game Changer Radio Network and the one and only KGRA Radio, The Planet. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, our guest, Corey Good, is going to be speaking at Contact in the Desert. Uh, it's kicking off this Friday, the 19th. And uh, so tickets and info over at uh, JimmyChurchRadio.com. Come and hang out with us. Um, hey, Corey, are, are, are you going to be hanging out? Are you going to walk around and hang out with everybody? Yeah, actually, I, I, I'm going to do a couple meet and greets. I plan on uh, <clears throat> going to the vendor area and taking a look at uh, the art and, and different things that they have. And uh, I hope to attend one of your uh, get together. <laughs> you know, that's where I was going. Yeah, they're was, legendary. Yeah. Yeah. They, they're, they're getting to that level. Um, and you know, it has nothing to do with me or Rita, actually. It's the fans, you know, the fader knots are the absolute best. And last year we did have a, uh, a great time. Uh, and, and, you know, you hanging out was, uh, was a uh, pretty epic. Uh, it was a, a pretty fun night that we had. Plus we had the sightings. I, we, we walked up. Yeah. We walked up right at the end of, uh, I believe you and uh, Richard Dolan. And I can't remember who else was standing. Uh, Mike, there. Mike Barra was standing right there. Yes. Yes, yes. That's right. It was, it was a crazy night, man, uh, with the uh, sightings that were going on and the fader knots and the food and, and everything else. It, it, it just, it, it all comes together at contact in the desert. It's a, a really uh, amazing time. Um, now I, I wanted to, uh, ask you about this. Uh, the news today, I want to change gears a little bit. We'll get back to unity in the community in a bit. And uh, maybe we'll even uh, take some phone calls. But the the breaking news that you and I uh, were talking about earlier today, it, right before the show, was this crazy news once again about Trump. Uh, this show is never uh, about politics, but the conspiracy of politics is uh, right now, today, it's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> it just won't stop. Every single day, there's something else. The uh, change anytime soon. Yeah, game changing. So here we have this thing today where suddenly, which is about Comey saying that, you know, Trump uh, had told him to uh, get rid of Flynn or stop the Flynn. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, to stop investigating Flynn. Now, uh, obviously, the questions of obstruction of, of justice come into play. And immediately the both sides were out there talking about uh uh, you know, the, the big impeachment word, right? And that was started coming. And it's like happening so fast. I don't know what's going to go on tomorrow. But when you hear well, this. Tomorrow, who, you know, if, who knows? The way information has been flowing and how little of it has panned out. I'm just waiting to see how much of this is actually going to pan out. And then I will form an opinion because. Every time I've seen, I, I, there's just been so much uh, tainted information going around on both sides that I've just stayed away from the whole topic, to be honest. The only thing I've really focused on is some of the information I'm receiving in the background about the uh, basically stealth civil war that's going on in this country between the globalist deep state and um, several uh, groups that uh, 
are are se- several uh, yeah groups that are backed by what we're calling this global alliance. So th- this is it's very real, and there's been a stalemate in this battle that's been going on for a while that uh, um, we may see some movement on here pretty soon. Um, I mean, there's been talk about impeachment, but there's been talk on the other side about, you know, actual, um, you know, military coups occurring. There's, there have been some, there's been some very, you know, there's, there, there has been some scary lines of uh, conversation going on in the background. Is it the, uh, when we talk, when we drop uh, the deep state, you know, who was running the government for real, you know, behind uh, what we see publicly, are they just not happy with Trump, or is it the is it the cabal? Is it you know the the feds? Is this a money thing? Is this an ET well, it's driven above. thing? It's a, it's a it's a status. It's, they want the status quo, um, and you know the government's really it's not ran by the heads of these different departments. It's ran by career bureaucrats and politicians who usually work more on the mid-level area. They're people that are almost impossible to fire. And, um, you know, that's, that's really what they're talking about when they're talking about the deep state. And a lot of these people happen to have globalist views or agendas, which, you know, the globalist agenda goes into the new world order, which, you know, where that came from. So, you know, it's, you know, it's it's just a very tricky topic right now, especially with uh, everyone being polarized still from the elections. But on the inside, the shadow stuff that's going on, it's just as polarized. But it's what's occurring is is much much more dangerous, and uh, uh, the ramifications of of the different uh, games that are being played um, could could uh, pop out for everyone to see at at any time. Is is the control of the media uh, part of the, how do I want to say this? Every single misstep is under a magnifying glass when it comes out of Washington, D.C. right now. Every little thing is just amplified and no mistakes are allowed. Is that the deep state and 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 you know corporate media that that controls um, all of the media outlets, trying to make sure that he cannot succeed? Well, you know, not only have have we had documentation that proves that uh, the uh, intelligence community vets and uh, screens all just about all of the news that we see. But we've recently seen the law, I think, passed that's, that overtly stated that propagandizing the public is legal and uh, something that, you know, the government is going to pursue. So this isn't, you know, in a, 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 a conspiracy theory. This is something that's been implemented since the days of them first um, having uh, superheroes that, like Captain America on uh, comic books. The, the um, both yourself and Wilcock, not only on this show, but uh, to me privately, have also you guys have expressed this uh, since before the election that if Trump made it in, that uh, if if somehow that that happened, that that he would end up ultimately being forced out, that they actually don't want him there, and it, it seems like I mean from where I'm sitting that that's exactly what is happening here. It's like a battle he can't win. And is, is that is that what is going on here? Is he just absolutely being forced out? Yes, he's being shut down at uh, on, on, on every avenue he tries to take. Uh, you know, uh, you could argue that uh, a lot of his rhetoric has caused him, you know, he shot himself in the foot, you know, a lot, which he does repeatedly. But uh, there is an aspect of this deep state wanting to maintain the status quo. And if someone comes in and says, you know, that they are uh, a nationalist, not a globalist, and it, 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 it scares them. And they've already been losing power throughout the globe because of this global alliances work that's been uh, reducing their uh, footprint in, in other countries. So, 
the uh, the cabal has uh, been licking their wounds for a little while, and uh, the last thing they want right now uh, are you know any other surprises popping up. So, yeah, it, they're they're uh, definitely on a war footing. And uh, is there but, a yes? And I hear you. Is there a way for him to fight back and survive this? I I don't I don't know I I don't know I I don't see him I mean the next four years are just going to be turmoil I mean I'm, and I'm not being a prophet by saying that everyone knows that right and I don't think anyone can guess what will happen three months from now let alone you know three years from now just you know the way things have been occurring all the things that pop out in the in the news cycle the 24 hour news cycle right. And the the other fascinating thing for me that I wanted to ask you about, I, I would think that every president, it doesn't matter who, we can go back, uh, go back to Kennedy and name everybody in the last 50, 60 years, has all stumbled, has all made mistakes in the Oval Office, has all said the wrong things, um, and we don't know about it because it's not leaked and we just don't know. But it seems like, with Trump uh, and his administration, everybody is leaking. Everybody is talking. Every agency is leaking. His friends are leaking. It's the leakiest ship ever. And and it's just like we now know, you know, every single day, we know every single mistake that he makes all day long. Is that part of it? I mean, is everybody in on it? Well, <clears throat> like I said, he does shoot himself in the foot quite often. Um, he's providing them uh, all the content that they need at this point. But, uh, you know, there is a, a concerted effort. And a lot of it has to do with, you know, ideology and people being loyalty to their parties. And <clears throat> what uh, we're, you know, this is more of the divide and conquer stuff that we've been talking about in, in the unity for the com uh, unity in the community. Right. You know, they want... You know, people, if they're out protesting in the streets against Trump, instead of uh, protesting and demonstrating for uh, suppressed technologies to be released, if uh, all of these people refocused all of this energy they have, you know, to, to something like that, you know, it, it, overnight, this, uh, this, this world would change and we would start to get the information we want. And uh, it's... It's much better for the elite if they have us fighting at each other's throats all the time. Well, one of the uh, one of the most important points here that uh, you just brought up that this community has been talking about for a long time is that suppressed technology, and it would fix so many different things. Obviously, somebody's going to make a lot less money um, uh, with some of these technologies coming out. There must be a way to monetize those technologies too as well but they just don't um you're not the only one that has uh, spoken about this why can't we get uh the sphere being alliance to get this technology to us directly and and go around washington why can't why can't et help us it in 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 a more direct fashion well the cosmos is a huge bureaucracy. These uh, benevolent groups, they have cosmic law that they follow, and they can't overtly come and interfere in our timeline. Now, what is the most consistent thing that we hear from contactees going back to the 50s? The non-terrestrials always communicate usually two things. Tell your government to release suppressed technologies and raise your consciousness or become more spiritual. Those are the two most consistent things that you that you hear. And those are those are two things that this community can focus on. We can focus on trying to get information out to the wider community to help raise the consciousness, and we can start to, uh, uh, I guess plant the seeds that there is higher technology already developed out there that the government is using and begin to catalyze the public to 
start demanding this technology be released, especially the pharmaceutical technologies that could save many, many lives every year. Right, right. And uh, somebody just tweeted, uh, Eric just tweeted, check this out. He says, Jimmy, you're talking like you believe everything that the news says about Trump all of a sudden. Are you serious? What is up with that? Eric, listen to me, my friend. That's exactly my point that I'm trying to drive home. This is what the media is projecting out onto the world. That's what I'm addressing here. Dude, the last thing that I do is listen to the media. The point is, this is the message. This is the narrative. This is what they are projecting out on everybody else. The people that are listening to this show, and Corey knows this. I'm speaking directly to Eric or to this audience. That the people that listen to this show know my position on this. Do not listen to the news. Whatever it is today, right now it's Trump and Comey and a memo. And my suggestion is you take what you're listening to on the news right now. Flip it over 180 degrees, and what have you got? Then you're closer to the real news. There is no memo. Comey didn't hear it. I don't know. I don't know, but that's probably closer to the truth. But they are trying to control your emotions. That's what I'm speaking about, Eric. I'm not speaking. Man, I don't believe that crap. What I do believe is that they're trying to, uh, what Corey is speaking about right now, they're trying to stir this up. They're trying to stir it up. Corey, have you ever felt um, us, this country, and the world being this close to absolute craziness in your life? It feels like day to day, this thing could just blow, doesn't it? Uh, not even close. I've never seen anything like this. Right. And a lot of it has to do, again, with these energetic changes that are occurring in our solar system. It's affecting people, and depending on your polarity, if you're a positive person, you're going to become more blissed out and uh, start finding having all these synchronicities that you can't explain, and you'll start to you know have success in your spiritual growth path. If you're negative, you're going to find yourself being more frazzled. You're driving down the road, and you just want to smash into the person next to you, and, you, and people just have this frazzled energy, and they're very reactionary right now. So, you know, that's how a lot of uh, the negative people uh, in this field and in, in others are they're self-identifying. They're identifying their polarity, and they can't help it. It's the, the energetic changes that are occurring are, you know, just, you know, causing them to act out. And uh, it's happening all over the globe on one level or another with people's behaviors. Right, right, right. And that's interesting how it could be. Uh, something that is, you know, completely off planet and out of our control too, as well. The the thing when when I talk about and I bring so many different uh, people um, on the show, different researchers to talk about the 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 darkness that seems to be pushing back against the light. And what I mean by that is we can all feel it. We all see it. What I stopped doing. This is and and I'll. Uh, um, uh, I'll say this directly. I stopped a couple of years ago. I just quit watching the news. I stopped because I could feel it changing me like I was getting ill, like I was getting sick, you know, and there was something going on. And as soon as I stopped that, Corey, I felt better, right? I felt it, it was amazing how effective uh, television yeah. and, and the news and and that drama can be on us, on you, on this audience, on the entire planet. It's all mind control and manipulation. It's, it's all it is. So, you know, you're doing yourself a favor by cutting that type of media out of your life. Do you, uh, and how do you handle that? Well, because I have to comment on certain things, I do, um, but, uh, take a look at the news for like 20 to 30 minutes every, you know, sometimes every day or every few days to kind of keep it Okay, so, we've uh, lost, uh, okay. You're, you've got to speak into the phone. Um, there you, know, you go. I stay apprised on the news, but, um, you know, I, I can't watch it all day, you know, like I used to back when I was working in the IT field. 
you know, I was, we constantly had the news running, uh, you know, in the background. And, uh, you know, I just can't uh, handle that kind of uh, negative energy coming at me that often. And it, it is that effective, isn't it? It, it just it, it just is. They know uh, how to how to affect the mind. It's 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 not a joke. It's not a joke. No, these uh, the the best thing that ever happened to the intelligence community was the invention of the television. Right, right. Made job much easier. When, when, when you are, I wanted to ask you to uh, the last contact that, you, that you've had uh, with uh, the sphere beings and what the, the last message has been, do you ever talk to them about this? Talk to them about? Uh, uh, mind control and the media controlling the masses and the status quo here. Uh, no, I don't. That, that's not much of a, of a topic that the Blue Avians would broach. <laughs> They seem to be either pointing out things about myself that I need to change, a lot of personal things, or they're, um, you know, you know, talking about uh, higher level vibratory kind of stuff, you know, about more, more. I guess you talk about the esoteric kind of things. Right, right, right. Very interesting, because uh, we've we've been warned about this uh, here. You know, we've had different authors, and I always bring up uh, George Orwell. But we've we've had, you know, the suggestion of this going back almost before television, that this is what is happening. But nobody wanted to listen to the warnings. Instead, they wanted to stay comfortable in their life. Right. No matter what it is, they wanted to have the blinders on and ignore what was going on around them. And that's uh, and that's America mainly that we're talking about. But uh, typically, that's the way America, America has been. Even, you know, World War II, we didn't want to get involved in the war. We were the sleeping giant. We had to, you know, the public had to get to a certain point to where they would be pulled out of this state that you're talking about into a state of action. And it seems like each generation, it takes something more intense to catalyze them. So hopefully, uh, you know, it won't take another 9-11 or another crazy situation like that to catalyze people uh, to, to wake up and, uh, you know, n- not just, you know, take their, their country back, but, you know, basically, you know, reinstill some sort of ethics into, you know, the political process at, at any level would be nice at this point. Why do you think it is it's so hard to be good? Why do you think it's so hard to you know, service to others and, and, and forgiving yourself and others, and, you know, and changing the vibration on this planet. That's hard work. That's hard. It is. It's, because the, the, the entire matrix is set up to make you be self-focused. I need to eat. I need uh, clothes. Um, I need a, a nicer car than my neighbor. You know, we are, we are programmed that way. So, you know, you know, we, we really don't have much of a chance. And, you know, you go on that treadmill, right? You graduate from school and, and you go out and you and you work for 30 years and you get to the end of the line and you get the, the nice house and the and the three car garage with three cars in it and everything that you thought was supposed to make you happy. And then you step back and you go, you know what? There's a lot more to life here than this. I don't feel any different than when I started this madness, right? Well, yeah, you get to the end of your life and you feel robbed. You missed the whole point of life. And uh, you were guided down the wrong path by uh, everything that you, you thought that you trusted. You know, the government, the media, uh, you know, the social norms that are used to program societies. So... Yeah, you know, yeah. There's, we've got a lot to overcome. I, I, um, I, I got an email uh, the other day from somebody that said uh, that they were. I think they said that they were in their 80s, and I think that's what it was. I'm going to paraphrase here, but that I've gotten to the end of my life. Right, I literally just read what we're talking about, and that I've just realized that I did it all wrong. 
right? I, I, I did it all wrong, and, and your show makes me happy, and I realize that the people that you interview and, and your guests and the people that call into the show are doing it the right way. And here I am, and I've, I've done it wrong all these years. And it just it makes me wonder, too. It makes me look back and reflect. You know, I, I am so glad that I took the path that I did. And for you now, are, are is, is that, you know, are you getting that same vibe? Are you happy on this path? Have you found your bliss? You know, I have found my bliss. It's, uh, you know, it was very difficult when I first started, you know, coming out as a whistleblower. I, you know, the first probably six months, I did not know what was going to happen to me or what was going to happen to my family. You know, I was, I was, I was worried, to, to be honest. And then as time went by and I was able to, to talk about this, this secret space program information without major reprisals, I had threats, then, you know, I, I began to be able to enjoy myself a little bit more and try to become more comfortable, you know, because I'm an extreme introvert. At the beginning, when I was sitting in front of the cameras at Gaia, I was petrified. I was petrified just being an introvert in front of cameras, but also petrified delivering that information because, you know, I, I knew that there could be reprisals and I knew that 90% of people out there, or I figured 90% of people out there were just going to, you know, shake their heads and, you know, move on and not even stop to listen. Right, right. Well, that's the, you could sit, uh, uh, all day, you know, flip a coin, flip it a hundred times. You're going to, it's going to come back 50 times heads, right? Life, this country, everything is 50%. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's just, you can start off with a hundred percent of, you know, but as you move along in life, everything just averages out. So you're going to have half that don't get it. You are going to have half that do. You're going to have half that question um, uh, the, for the wrong intentions. You're going to have the ones that question for the right. Everything is 50-50, my friend. And it's just, it's really funny. You're never going to make everybody happy. You're never going to get into the heads of 100% of everybody to effectively make change. And I think that you, you, you are fully grasping uh, that idea today. Right. And I'm not, I'm not even looking for 50%. If, um, you know, we can get a small percent of the mass consciousness to have this hundredth monkey effect kick in, then we're going to have a major effect on the direction our mass consciousness chooses the direction that we're moving in. The, you know, this future timeline, we're all deciding it right now as a mass consciousness. So, yes, we, um, all of us, I think we should all be called to reach out to the mass consciousness and uh, try to negate all of the mind control that's going on with overt calls of action to uh, put out media, put out information any way we can to positively affect that timeline through the, the mass consciousness. Let's take a break right here, Corey. Fantastic conversation. Thank you so much for this. And the audience is right there with us. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. More with Corey right after this short break. You stay with us. Here, we listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. Always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk, Jimmy Church with Fade to Black. KGRA Radio.com. <laughs> End time is not what you thought. In their new book, 122436, authors Mike and Cheryl Gilmore bring forth a startling new idea on the beginning of humankind, 
how life begins on earth and when our creator concludes this age. In the book 122436, three small groups of individuals separated by thousands of miles discover together the answers to the beginning of our universe and all the life it contains. Mike Gilmore is the author of five Levels of Power novels and the Sled Investigation series. Cheryl Gilmore is current state director in South Carolina for MUFON and brings a lifetime of experience with UFOs and related fields. As a team, their new book about life in the near future on Earth sets aside most people's religious and scientific beliefs. Available exclusively on Amazon in softback for $8.99 or the ebook price for only $2.99. Remember, Amazon softback $8.99, ebook only $2.99. 12-24-36. Get your copy today. Hey there, quick question for you. Would you be okay with more energy, more endurance, thicker, healthier hair, a better mood, reduced appearance of wrinkles, improved sleep, improved blood pressure and cholesterol profiles, improved vision, improved memory? Okay then. Well now, have you heard of Nature's Youth RSF? It's from the anti-aging experts at naturesyouth.com. naturesyouth.com. See, at Nature's Youth, they understand exactly what it means to provide top quality health products. And Nature's Youth customers not only improve their health, they know they're also providing their body with the right nourishment to maintain that peak performance and fight the aging process. If health, wellness, and nutrition are what you desire, choose Nature's Youth RSF. I did. You see, you're going to get older. It's just up to you how you feel when you get there. Get started today. Nature's Youth RSF. Simple to use, simple to order. Go to naturesyouth.com. That's naturesyouth.com. Naturesyouth.com. You are listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Rhys Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is Revolution. The Revolution will not be televised. The Revolution is on radio. Ciao. Welcome back. Fade to Black. Our guest tonight, Corey Good. Corey's going to be at Contact in the Desert this week. He'll be hanging out. Really looking forward to it. Now, for this audience, I'm going to say this uh, right now with Corey on the line. Um, Corey and I talk, uh, for anybody out there that thinks uh, that, uh, that I go easy, I'll say this. Corey and I have had some pretty harsh conversations privately on the phone. Uh, Corey, you would say that that is indeed true, isn't it? Definitely. Yeah, okay. We've definitely had some interesting conversations. Very interesting. And so I'm I'm going to say this. I'm going to share a, a taste of one of those conversations with uh, 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 something that I said to you once. And I, I'm going to say this to the audience, and I want you to answer it again uh for for the audience and i said to you once i said Corey, you are perplexing to me i said that you are one of two things and you know exactly where i'm going right now Corey. so let's do this okay i said you're one of two things there's a possibility of a third thing out there and I want to let that hang out. And when I asked you about the first two versions of you, then you suggested the third, which I hadn't mentioned yet, which I found really interesting. So let's actually talk about this for a second. Um, I said, uh, because we were just talking about mind control right before the break. And I said to you, I said, Corey, either uh, one of two versions of Corey Good. Uh, the first one is everything that you are presenting to the world is is accurate and real and has happened there's that 100 percent, or the exact opposite that there is uh the possibility that this you could be in the middle of a crazy mind control program 
where all of this has been injected into you and you believe it as real, but the events haven't happened, but you don't know the difference. Right. And and I want you to say to the audience right now, yes, Jimmy, you actually said that to me on the phone. Right. <laughs> yes. And you said it to me in person, too. Yes, I said it to you in person. So when I when I say that to you, how do you react and which version do you think you are? Well, I'm definitely speaking the uh, what I believe is the truth. Now, how would I be able to answer that uh, I'm being mind controlled. You know, that I had a lot of access to that type of technology. I did see all the sophist sophisticated technologies that were available to be able to, uh, you know, use the voice of God type technologies to put in screen memories. You know, I've seen what is out there, uh, or at least what was out there during the time I was in the programs. You know, non terrestrials and people in the programs are going to have a lot. Uh, more advanced technology than when, you know, I was serving. So we always have to have that uh, that in the back of our minds with everyone in this field. And to be honest, after I served 20 years in the programs, saw all these different types of non-terrestrials and interrogation type situations, I had never heard of a eight foot tall blue avian ET. Never heard of it. Right. So when the uh, contact first began with me, I was a little bit concerned. And, you know, I had to vet out uh, on my own, go through a process of vetting out to, to make sure that, you know, I wasn't being, <clears throat> you know, uh, manipulated by a trickster non-terrestrial being. There's a lot of those. So you have to go through a, a self-vetting process. Uh, one of the biggest problems with most humans is that if a non-terrestrial appears before them, people fall to their knees too easily and, and just start regurgitating what they're being told. So there's a self-vetting process that you have to do when you're uh, either channeling in direct contact with uh, non-terrestrials um, or indirect contact with non-terrestrials. You have to go through not only vetting them, testing the spirits, but you have to vet yourself throughout the process to make sure that you're not getting emotionally attached to a storyline and, and try to remain as objective as possible. But, and, well, through that, I'm sorry for interrupting you, uh, Corey, but th through that vetting process, how do you, how did you come to the conclusion that you are not part of some MK Ultra mind control Manchurian Manchurian candidate situation. You know, I, it had to have been uh, pretty traumatic to go through because you're questioning your own sanity. But you came out of it on the other side. So, how do you know? Well, yeah, and, and and throughout the process of getting your your memories back from being blank slated in in the uh, uh, twenty and back program the information you don't have immediate recall. It starts coming to you in chunks, right. you know, in, in little in, in, in pieces. So you have to, you know, vet yourself out during that process too. You know, uh, if you're, if you're able to, to have that presence of mind, you know, you're like, okay, I'm now uh, seeing uh, an eight foot tall blue bird. Am I showing any other signs of schizophrenia or right. any other signs of this or that? You know, you, you have to, you know, start, you know, looking at yourself immediately. So, you know, I did, I, I went through that vetting process of myself. Um, I've also been working with uh, uh, Gonzalez, who has, um, his name's popped up quite a bit. And uh, there have been enough shared experiences to where I, I have ruled out that that is what's going on. Did you? Now, is, is there influence going on? by different non-terrestrials uh, that I'm not being given the whole picture on. Yeah, I, I think that's going on as well. And how, how do you do that? I mean, how do you, how do you, uh, what's the vetting process for you with that? I mean, is there another non-terrestrial that you can go to behind somebody else's back to confirm their information? I mean, how do you do it? Well, I mean, I, there have been times to where I've asked one group about the other, but, you know, one could argue You'd be basically 
either you, you'd be basically asking the same source if people believe that you're being mind controlled. You know, you'd be asking one aspect of the mind control is this mind control or right, right. Is, you know, so you know, it, it, it's when when you start breaking into all the fine details, you know, especially when with people when it starts violating their own belief systems or what the information that they've gathered over 10, 20, 40, 50 years of researching this and it and it doesn't match up, then you know that's going to be the thing that they're going to want to jump to first is you know that it's uh, uh, mind control. But they they usually they try to explain it away in in several different types of uh, ways before uh, they settle that, you know, it has to be mind control. So everybody's tweeting, okay, what was the third version of Corey? Okay, so uh, again, uh, this I'm just going to speak about the direct conversation that uh, Corey and I were having. I don't recall. I don't recall what you're, what oh, you're the, talking the, about. There. Yeah, the third version was when you interrupted me and you go, the third version is that I'm full of crap, it's all a lie, and I'm doing this for money. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I said, exactly. And I said, I take the third version out. I, 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 I'm not, I don't feel the, the third version. Not not from you. I mean, I, we've all sat down. You've sat down with the fader knots and you've hung out with Rita and all of us many times. And I don't get that vibe from you, but possibilities. Uh, Gaia, Gaia is the one, only one that's really made money off of this so far. <laughs> <laughs> easy now. Easy, easy. They're listening. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they really are. I, no, no, there's not a slight on them. They're a business. That's right, they right, 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 you right. Know, and, you know, so, yeah, you know, speaking gigs are starting to come up and, and all that. But I end up bringing half my crew with me and spending more money than I make. Right. You know, going to them. Right. To, just right. to have the, the production value and to, to, you know, you know, to have the presence. So, you know, it's not, it's definitely not a money thing. It's a mission oriented thing. And that's something that all the star seeds out there are going to understand that, you know, yeah, you know, you need to survive in this Babylonian money magic society right now. I have to feed my kids. I have to have a roof over my head, but at the same time, why can't you do that while on your mission? Right, right. Yeah, there's. Uh, this is this is America, man. No, but I don't think I don't have any no. issues with that. It, it's just really funny. I think jealousy, uh, which runs rampant um, here as well, uh, has a has a large part to do with uh, criticism. So let's. I'll just say that. And if anybody out there is listening that is part of that jealousy, well, you know what? We recognize that. And it, it be, you'd be surprised how much uh, we don't care or or let it affect us. But that being said, I want to go back and uh, remind you and, and, and the audience of a, of a tale. There was a guy in our industry. His name was Bill Moore, William Moore, Bill Moore. And Bill Moore was part of the discovery of Roswell. He wrote some of the first books and was part of that research and breaking that story. He was part, he was involved neck deep with uh, the MJ 12 documents and, and, and presenting those and was, was just out there on the circuit, writing his books and, uh, you know, TV and radio and all that stuff. And, uh, and it turned out that, you know, and so much faith in the, UFO community was put into this guy, right? And I go back and I listen to him now, and I, you know he was just completely full of crap. But nonetheless, he did write those books. He was part of a lot of things that were breaking and so forth. But he was also involved with some other crazy stories. So he gets up, Corey, um, uh, at, uh, I don't even want to say the name of the conference, but the major conference of the year room full up packed right thousand people who's who of everything in ufology and the paranormal everybody is there he steps up to the microphone it's a crazy video to watch he steps up to the mic and says i'm a disinfo agent right mm -hmm. and he says i've been fed this information from this group and this group and this group and i've been misleading you all after all these and and, and literally literally turns and runs, goes out the back door and is never seen again. Okay. Wow. I have not seen that. Yeah. Oh man. You know, now it's f what ufology doesn't want is like a repeat of that. 
right? Because they put their faith in, you know, uh, those MJ-12 documents and all of his research with Roswell, and he's producing letters and knowledge and things and documents. It was all fed to him, you know? And and there there's some other parts, but the, the, the moral to the story, without going, staying, you know, into the, the Bill Moore fiasco, um, it was a black eye on ufology, and it took it took a long time for uh, for the community to recover from the shock of that, you know. And and so when it comes to you or other whistleblowers or or um, you know uh, that come out publicly, you know, it's hard for us to put our faith back into it. It's it's really well, hard. That goes, that's- that's why a lot of the researchers that have been sitting back on the fence for the last couple of years are, you know, just now starting to feel comfortable talking to me and putting me through their own vetting process because they've been waiting to see if I'm a flash in the pan or if there's some sort of, uh, you know, uh, get caught up in a bunch of lies and inconsistent. You know, they've, they've been sitting back waiting and watching just because of that scenario that you were bringing up that, I've heard there have been a number of black eyes. Uh, I'm not really versed in the history of ufology, but, uh, you know, uh, the Mirage Man thing uh, that occurred. <laughs> Bill Moore was part of that. And and, and Bill Doty. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, in, 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 in on the, well, man, I, I don't want to get, it, it bums me out, man, all of those stories. Bill Doty, uh, who is in the film Unacknowledged, and I talked to Greer uh, both on and off uh, the show about Bill Doty. Bill Doty is somebody I'm not cool with. I'm not cool with that guy. And now his story about what he did with disinformation and, and payoffs and money and creation of documents and causing people to go crazy like Paul Benowitz and, and some of the things that he was uh, guilty of to me just it makes my blood boil and and putting trust and faith into somebody and then you have somebody like bill Doty come along because dude that's what we did and he doesn't have any regrets now and so when people uh just like you're talking about right now Corey, where we're talking about disinformation or is this possible or would this actually go on it does it really it does. really really does and, and and there are people that are heavily compromised in this field. A hundred percent. You have and, to be careful. You know, so that's always going to be a part of it as well. So that's something we're always going to have to deal with and why discernment is so important. You know, not just to buy any person's line, uh, you know, hook, line, and sinker, that we need to, to make sure we put it through a filtering process and a vetting process, you know, as an individual and as a community. Yeah, you know, and uh, I, um, I, I try to. I'm, I'm very aware, Corey, and for you, the innocence of you, and it's interesting for you to hear you say, you know, I don't know much about ufology or the history. That is part of what I enjoy about you because you don't know the bill. Uh, uh, the Bill Moore story or whatever, you know, uh, certainly uh, Doty and Ben. It's been embarrassing a few times. I've had people come up and introduce themselves to me, and I have no idea who they are, and they're uh, well-known in the industry, and it's, you know, it's kind of uh, been, been embarrassing a few times. But, uh, you know, yeah, there's a lot of the, the history that, you know, I, I don't know that I'm starting to put together. Right. And uh, are you, do you go back? I, I just wanted to ask you this before we move forward. Do you study the history now? Do you do you get the, the books that were written in the 70s and the 80s and, and check out the different researchers and maybe some of the old radio programs or the old documentaries and the things that were done in the 60s and 70s? Do you take the time to no. go and, and do that? No, I haven't. I, I don't have the time. Um, I'm you know, working so hard now and what a little time I do have that when I'm not traveling to spend with my kids, you know, no, I mean, I, I, there's a lot of that stuff that I need to research. What I've mainly been doing is relying on team members that have the knowledge when, because I just don't have the time to look at all these different areas. You follow this ufology field. There's so much, there is so much here that, uh, it, I mean, it, it takes it's it's almost full time just researching uh, to stay current, let alone 
you know, researching the, the history and uh, things that went on in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. The, uh, the, the question that gets asked a lot about you and your position, because uh, you've got, you've got a, quite a few people out there now that, that are listening to you, and that's, that's not a joke at this point. But the one question that comes up, not only from your true dedicated followers, but others out there, including myself, um, where is that one piece of hardware? like the glass pad or a photograph or a video, a cell phone camera shot, your wife taking a picture of you flying away in the back, you know, that, that one thing that would blow the doors out, off of all of this. When can we expect something like that? You know, I don't know that uh, we're going to have anything like that when it comes to, uh, you know, to my testimony. We have, uh, they, you the whole point of uh, these programs is to make sure you don't have any evidence, to make sure all you have is just an interesting story. That is the way they, that's, that's how uh, the, the programs work. Now, you know, setting up cameras, uh, there's been times where uh, I set up a camera and a meeting won't occur uh, because uh, they didn't want me to, to record them. Uh, there have been times I've set up a camera a uh, fresh battery, um, you know, and uh, all of a sudden I, I'll go out and uh, after uh, an encounter and the battery is completely empty and there's nothing on the cart. It's like something uh, remotely drained the battery. Um, when I've, so many times when the, the blue spheres have come into the house, I'm basically bouncing my wife off the bed trying to wake her up <laughs> and it, it's, she will not come up, come out of the sleep. Um, you know, for, for a while, you know, she wasn't seeing a lot of things and, uh, she was scratching her head and she was outside and she saw, uh, an area to where I had walked barefoot, walked out in the, uh, uh, kind of muddy ground and my footprints disappeared and then they reappeared headed in, headed in a different direction, you know, feet away, uh, you know, to where I had obviously left and been returned. Right. It was she started seeing that kind of stuff that she started uh, to uh, uh, figure out that something was really going on, and then of course later on, you know there were um, there were enough incidents around the house to where uh, you know she didn't question it at all. Well, what about a gift? What about like a blue Avion T-shirt? You know, <laughs> I'm being cavalier, but it was kind of wrong. But you know what I mean. What about a gift? Something that they could give to you to to bring back. Um, such as I don't know a ring I don't know I don't know I'm just I'm you know it, it, could you imagine Corey if you if you stepped up at contact in the desert and said I was given this you know last night from uh from the blue avions to uh as a gift to planet earth and here it is it's yeah, game you know, it's game it's, over it's the they, these, these different beings, they, they don't want us looking to them for for answers. The whole point is that, uh, you know, we are the ones that we've been waiting for, that we need to get off of our knees and, uh, you know, start to uh, work to get this this freedom and this technology. It's not something that's just going to be handed to us. It's not something that, you know, uh, an alien group is going to circle into the government and come in and say, you know, here, here is free energy. Uh, it, it's a, a natural process that every planet has to go through. It's cosmic law. And uh, they're not going to come and interfere with free will of those on the planet by uh, giving the signs in the sky or otherwise that, you know, they do indeed exist. Yeah, stay on the phone. Stay on the phone with me, brother. Don't, don't, don't lose me, Corey. Stay on the phone. But it, it, it almost sounds like religion, Right? It almost sounds like you're asking for everybody's faith. Right? It almost sounds religious in its in its twist here. Well, you know, in a way, it um the, the this whole experience has been a religious experience for me. Um, you know, I, I people that have seen me go through the metamorphosis that I've gone through, you know, just on cosmic disclosure. 
there has definitely been a spiritual metamorphosis, but along, uh, of course, along with the physical one that has occurred. So, yeah, there is definitely a spiritual component to it. But the whole reason that these beings are coming to us is not that they want us to have faith in them. They want us to have faith in ourselves. They want us to stop looking to different belief systems or religions or beings to appear in the sky to save us. Right. And for us to save ourselves, that is that is their whole goal. That is the whole point of their message and the way they've approached uh, humanity. Well, and, and, and again, what I'm suggesting here is that too as well. But the other, the other side of it is the, uh, your message, um, through multimedia or through speaking publicly is, is also based on faith, right? Well, yeah, well, you can say everything's based on faith. Every single thing, including science, that those are all belief systems. Right. They are theories. They are uh, uh, ideas that we've come up with together to try to explain the natural world, uh, the way energy flows back and forth, and um, to and to ex- try to explain this spiritual component or the spark of life, or the one infinite creator that we all have in us. Um, you know, we're all trying to explain these things, and we all develop our own religions and belief systems. Every single person out there—I don't care if you're an if you're an atheist—that's your belief system. Everyone has a belief system. Everyone has a personal religion that they've created that they consider to be their lens for viewing the world. Uh, we're going to take a break here in one minute, and when we come back, uh, we're going to uh, continue opening this up, but. Uh, what about the the video evidence, the the film evidence, the contactee, the 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 images that have been uh, uh, photographed, but or craft, but also all of the sightings that have happened, uh, including with myself, uh, with you too as well. Is is that who you are communicating with and and interfacing with? Well, most of what we're seeing in the skies are, are you know, craft developed by um, the military-industrial complex, to be honest. For the most part, that is what we are seeing. And as a part of them, to, uh, they have a plan to start to disclose this uh, military-industrial complex space program that they have had in operation. Uh, as a part of that, they're starting to allow us to see them in the skies more often. That's interesting. Um, there, but then there's the one. Okay, you you said a large part, and and I totally agree with that. A large a large part of it is terrestrial and man made and experimental craft that we can't explain because we've never seen it before in there. But then there's the other, the small percentage is the one that I'm referring to. When I'm out there with a group of friends in the desert, and I watch a white ball take off from the desert floor and blast up into the you know into the stars in two seconds says something to me that is not experimental craft so what is that that i am seeing well a lot of the times when you see a white ball behaving that way you're seeing the uh, corona around a, a an experimental craft not an experimental craft a uh, an advanced craft uh, be it uh, human made or non terrestrial made. Okay. Um, All right. I'll, I'll buy. I'll it, buy. It creates that. a field. It creates a field or a bubble around the craft, and um, what, inside of our atmosphere, you're going to get this uh, electric corona type of uh, uh, light. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense to me. I have no idea. I can't explain any of it away. Let's take a break right here, Corey. And our guest tonight is Corey Good. This is Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and KGRA The Planet. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Follow me on Twitter at J Church Radio. Follow Corey at Sphere Being Alliance. We'll be right back. Hi, everybody. This is Rob Halford, the Mental Guard on JimmyChurchRadio.com. This is KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station, Salt Lake City, Utah, Van Buren, Arkansas. Okay, nurse, let's get this man to the ER, stat. Right away, doctor. We see this every day. Heart